amazing guys. So, Billy and Debbie, thank you guys for being here and just sharing our respect for you. I'll be 51 tomorrow. <laughs> I wasn't expected to live that long. Uh, I'll try to be real quick. So, the only way I could start out is to tell you I grew up in a country western family that knew music and knew concerts. So I grew up around Merle Haggard, Buck Owens, my dad. My dad played for Bob Wills and the Texas Playboy, a very famous man. He helped start Bakersfield Sound. And I'm named after him. So I felt like I always had to go drinking and dancing on the tables at these honky tonks, you know. So at the age of uh, 22, I had one too many drinks, and I ended up with the wrong crowd, and they handed me a needle of heroin. And one shot is all I ever took. They put it in me, and it was contaminated with hep C. Just one shot on a drunken night. Uh, I continued to drink for another six years. When I turned 28, the doctor said, if you're not careful, you're going to die. So I quit. I quit drinking. I already had had cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, start eating right and uh, so little by little I started the ministry I started into the ministry I became a preacher I went back to school got a GED quit the oil fields quit the drinking the partying the womanizing and all those things <laughs> and uh, yeah that was a good idea uh, I went through a program I graduated that went back to college got a bachelor's degree all of that thing at 34 and uh, but I was dying my liver started turning cirrhosis real bad and that was being a good boy and so my heart was to go back and help other people get off of drugs alcohol things like that so I began pastoring overseeing 34 churches and then I started men and women's homes just a couple years ago but I started getting to where I couldn't even get up out of bed and I was the dream that I felt the Lord called me to do I couldn't even do so that was as frustrating as life could be. I'd do everything I could to get out there and get everything going, come home and pray and stay in bed. That is a terrible way to live. We got married 16 years ago in November 15th, I remember. <laughs> and so within the 16 years that we got married, she had three children, I had three and after we got married, we got 14 grandkids that just absolutely want to climb all over me. They love me. But to see me in bed all the time broke their heart. About four months ago, a little lady, we helped move them and their family, the men's home that we have, helped move her and her family. She got wind that I got sick, was sick, was struggling. She happened to send me... Uh, an email that told me about this the stuff. This, the stuff. Slot water. What she calls frog water. <laughs> I call the miracle tree is what I call it. So I didn't even go look at it. I'll just be honest. I did I was just desperate, tired, and <coughs> fed up. She shows up in the Sunday morning service and she sends her grandkids, she's shaking this bottle of this juice, and I'm so desperate to get well and to do what I'm called to do, that I trusted her. Because I trusted her husband. And I shot that thing down before I went to preach, and they said that's probably one of the best sermons they ever heard. What they liked about it was it was short. <laughs> but it was positive. <laughs> you know, and so it was positive. So I, I, I started, she started just handing it to me. It was nothing to high pressure, not trying to get me to sell anything wasn't any about any of these meetings she just said here just keep trying it and after about a week man I was up and running and uh, just crazy man my visions are coming back to where I could do what I need to do I keep telling her I need to find out where to get this I want to buy it and she said don't worry about it just don't worry about it it's okay here's some more and then when I started running out I'm like Hey, listen, I got one pack left. <laughs> We're going to have to do something about this. And she said, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. She threw some more uh, at me, you know. And so they asked me to come give a testimony because I was feeling great. 
And so I came to a meeting. That's where I met Tom. We were over at the Denny's, famous Denny's. <laughs> and they just asked me to speak how I feel, and, I, and I, I was feeling good. So I left the meeting, went out to the car. For some reason, I'm checking my phone. I'm on the phone for 20 minutes, and I get a phone call within there. They ask me where I'm at, and the Lord put it on his heart to sponsor me. So it took two people, and within that sponsorship, I was able to get on my feet, and I came home, and I'll hand the rest over to her. She's a church girl. She wasn't a crazy dancer like me, but this is Debbie, my wife. I just let her say her part. You know, being married to him over the last 16 years, I got to watch a whole lot of things that he went through. We, he went through two rounds of the intron injections and the reviver and however you say that. The tablet. Chemotherapy. Yeah, it's, it's a chemotherapy, you know, for the liver so they could pull um, the levels of the hep C down because they were way up in the millions. They were so high. And so he went through two treatments of that, probably one about, oh, ten years ago, and then the other one was just about four years ago. But with both times that he did it, it brought the levels down a little bit, but they were still in the millions. It never went down very far. The last time that he did it, um, his whole countenance and complexion had changed. He was an ashen gray. He couldn't get out of bed. He really didn't want to eat. He had no energy. And the doctor had told him, you know what, there was no surefire deal that it was going to work anyway. It was just a test. It was a trial. So he... He quit taking the injections and decided he was going to go ahead and live and do what he needed to do. The doctor that he had seen four years ago told him that he would never see his grandchildren grow up, and we have 14. And um, that was really devastating to him. So over the last few years, he spent a lot of time down and in bed, um, didn't have the energy to do a lot of things. We tried to go out on family events and do some fun things. She couldn't really go to Magic Mountain or something because if he got on the rides, he would immediately get sick. He'd have no energy whatsoever, and it just it was really devastating for him. And I've watched him over these years give it his all with these homes, trying to um, tell these other people to stay away from the drugs and the alcohol and everything because he was a prime example of what would happen if they continued doing what they were doing. And, and he had so much in him to see other people's lives change. But when Damaris came the end of June, and she had that product that we had never, ever heard of before. You know, him standing back there, staying in bed all week, getting up on Sunday long enough to preach, going home and getting back in bed. That was it. And she, he tried it that day. And then he tried it the next day and the next day and the next day. And it didn't take very long before he had energy in his body. And he was like, you know what, I would swear by this product, you need to start taking this. Because he knew how I was feeling. I didn't even want to get up. I was tired and drained. And I thought, oh, to myself, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but I watched him, and he would get up at 6.30 in the morning, and he would leave the house, and it would be 5, 6, 7 o'clock at night. I would call him on the phone, and I'd say, are you ever going to come home? What, what are you doing out there? What are you finding to do? And he had so much energy, and he felt so good, he didn't want to come home. He didn't want to get in the bed. He didn't want to lay there. And it's been absolutely amazing for him, plus the fact that he's lost 30 pounds. He doesn't have the lot of attention that he had before. And his whole outlook about everything has changed. He's got joy in his heart. He wants to tell everybody about Zija, and he's so excited. And he does call it the miracle tree. And we've put our son on it. And he's been diabetic since he was 12. And he's telling me yesterday, Mom, I can see better. I can see things out there that I couldn't see before. And he's been on it for five weeks. Wow. So for us, it is a godsend. It is a blessing. And we do want everybody to know the capabilities of this product has. You know, we are blessed. Yes, we are. That's awesome.